Today we're going to talk how to save money on groceries. Now food is one of the highest three items in the average person's budget along with housing and transportation. So if you can get your groceries in order and save money on groceries, then you're well on your way to getting financial success and hitting your financial goals. This is a huge passion of mine and I have gotten our food budget down to $100 per person each month, which is very low, but I've become a master at reducing our grocery budget and helping others reduce their grocery budget as well through coaching and I've created a course and everything. In this video, we're going to talk about meal planning, how to shop sales patterns, how to learn sales patterns, how to roll over ingredients, so many other topics as well. So make sure you watch the whole thing through. If you're wanting even more information on these topics, plus digging into each one, plus so many other topics as well, I do have a course that is actually launching today on June 1st. I am so excited. It is a how to save money on your groceries course, how I was able to get our grocery budget down $100 a person every month. Whoo! It's a doozy. It comes with a 15 page workbook. It comes with over 30 videos that are short, concise. You can get through the whole course in under two hours, bang it out. All the information is right there concise for you so that way you don't have to like go in peace and watch videos here, watch videos there, all figure out all the stuff, all the best ways to do it. No, it's all in one concise place for you so that you can just bang it out, become a rock star at mastering your grocery budget. So course launches today, link in the description box. It is on sale this week. After this week, it is going up to $79. So make sure you get it this week. You get the workbook, all of that. Also my Etsy templates on Excel and spending analysis on your budget, all of that down below in the description box for the course. So you definitely want to check it out. Okay. I want to preface this video on don't compare your journey to others. So we're going to talk about different tips and different ways that you can save money, but your journey is your own. So we may talk about things like cooking from scratch, and that's going to be the best way to save the most money versus buying pre-made pre-cut foods, pre-made in the frozen kits, meal services, different things like that. But if you are someone that is going and working, you know, 50, 60 hours a week, you get takeout, you go through the drive through every single night and you want to pick up a rotisserie chicken, that's totally okay. Now, could you save more money by buying a whole chicken and cooking it yourself by roasting in the oven or cooking in an Instant Pot? Absolutely. You can save a lot more money. There's a big markup on rotisserie chickens at the grocery store, but it's all about your journey and you know, you may not be there yet. You are learning how to save money. So you going to the grocery store and getting there, which is chicken is still going to save you so much more than buying Chinese takeout for your whole family. So take that into consideration when you're doing this, that yes, I may be talking about these tips, but also keep into consideration your journey. And I don't want you to go from like, I'm spending $1,000 a month on food and Kelly spends $100 on food. I need to get down to that level. No, we're talking about it in baby steps, chunks at a time. If you do buy the course, it's a lifetime access. So you can go through it now, get your food budget down quite a bit. And then after six months, go through the course again, get even more tips. You're going to be more on your journey and you're be more apt to be able to be like, okay, I didn't do that this time. Last time it was too extreme. Now I can do it this time. I feel more comfortable now. So take into consideration that, but don't compare your journey to others. If you do want to take it a step further and cook from scratch, that's really going to be the best way that for you to save the most money and the most bang for your buck. You know, you can go and get a pre-made meal and get a rotisserie chicken and all of that stuff, or you can roast yourself, get the best bang for your buck rather than buying like the pre-cut produce, the pre-cut veggies, all of that. But I will say, disclaimer, that you do have to be careful about picking recipes with all of these crazy ingredients and crazy fancy cheeses and fancy this and all this stuff. Sometimes those really, really detailed recipes could actually cost you more in the long run than buying like a frozen lasagna. If you're doing a regular lasagna with all this special stuff in it and this cheeses and all this, you know, fancy stuff. So be careful about that. You want to pick really simple recipes, simple ingredients that you already have on hand versus going out and buying all this 
all these recipes, all these ingredients for stuff that, of this recipe that you're only gonna cook once. That's gonna defeat the purpose and you're actually gonna spend more money. Next we're gonna talk about meal planning. So what is meal planning? I like to define meal planning as having that dreaded question that causes fights, especially in this whole household of what's for dinner. And Jamie's classic answer, I don't care, whatever you want. And then I'll recommend something and he'll say, that's fine. I'm sorry, excuse me, that's fine. That's fine? No, that's not what I want to hear. I do not want to hear that. That's fine. I want to hear either, no, that does not sound good. Can we have something else, babe? Or that sounds amazing. Let's do that. Those are your two options. One or the other. No, that's fine. To me, mm, that's, that's like as lukewarm as you can get that saying, no, I don't want that. That sounds gross. I'd rather eat out, but I'll accept your cooking because you're my wife and I have to. So <laughs> that is how I define meal planning of having that question, what's for dinner, having it once. So you can either do it once per week or once per month, depending on how often you want to meal plan. If you are new to meal planning, I recommend once per week. If you try and do once per month, then it's just going to become overwhelming and you're going to get overwhelmed. So I do have a printable in the workbook where you can go through and do your meal plan, have all the days laid out, and you can figure out what recipes you want to make. You can also do it for what meals. Do you want to do breakfast, lunch, or dinner? I recommend starting with one, start with dinner, start with lunches for the work week, start with breakfast, whatever you want to do, start with one and then you can kind of figure out from there and then you can add on and expand. Now, what is meal planning not? Meal planning is not the end all be all. It is not, this is so structured, we can't change. Say your husband has a meeting and it runs late and you can't change something or you can't move things around. No, you can move things around. You can switch days. Say, you know, something happens or Susie gets sick or basketball practice is canceled, whatever it may be. You can move the days around. You can rearrange them. So it's not an end all be all. It is just simply a guide of what the heck are we having for dinner? What are our options? Here's what we have on the menu. Here's what we have the ingredients for. Here's what we can do. And now you can go a step further into meal prepping. And I go into meal prepping in the course. But that is going to be even better, even more time saver. But meal planning is such an easy way to just take your stress off. What is your goal for meal planning? Obviously, we want to save time. Obviously, we want to save money, but it can go further. Do you want to eat healthier? Do you want to cut out a certain type of food? Like, do you want to go paleo? Do you want to go gluten-free? Do you want to go grain-free? Do you want to go keto? Do you want to go vegan? Do you want to go whatever lifestyle, food choice you want? You can factor that into your meal planning. So go deeper. What do you want out of meal planning? You know, are you trying to make some lifestyle changes for you and your family? Are you trying to lose? the quarantine 10 15 pounds that you've gained because I've certainly gained 10 pounds and yeah we're getting back on track here but what do you want from meal planning what do you want to get out of it how do you want it to benefit for your family that's going to be a big part of your why and that's going to help keep you motivated when you're like I don't want to do this I, I don't want a meal plan so keep that in front of you keep that as your why if you do want to spend a little bit of money, there are meal planning services. A really, really cool one is called Eat This Much. You can go in and put in what type of plan you want. You know, if you want keto or vegan or gluten-free or grain-free or whatever it is, weight loss, whatever it is, you can put that in there and then they'll send you emailed recipes, they'll send you shopping lists, they'll send you everything. It's a really, really cool guide. It's a really cool service. I do have a coupon for you guys of 25% off. You should use freedom in a budget coupon code. Also I'll link it down below. So if you want, you can pay a little bit of a service fee of having a service like eat this much. They're awesome. But you know, also the same with thrive thrive market is another great one. That's it's a little bit, I think it's better than a meal delivery service meal delivery service. I think they're still that meal delivery service is, is kind of like in the beginning where it says don't compare your journey to others. If you are getting takeout a lot, a meal delivery service is going to help you save money. Like ones like um, where you cook your own food, where they give you the ingredients and the meat and everything you cook your own food each, each night. That's going to help you save you money from you know going takeout but for me that would be more expensive because i already know how to buy and shop and i already know how to make my food from scratch so for me it would be a lot more money and my budget would go woo it would go way up from that 
So it all depends on your journey. But Thrive Market is more of like a grocery shopping type of thing. So I'll have links to them, but really hone in on your why for meal planning. What do you want to get out of it? What lifestyle do you want? You know, low carb or gluten-free or whatever it is, lose money, lose money. Spend less money, lose weight. That is our big goal for meal planning. This is kind of just fire hose of information. I'm sorry, it's just kind of all thrown at you. But if you're finding value and I would love for you to uh, subscribe to my channel, like this video, it really helps with the YouTube algorithm. I do have a newsletter, sign up for the newsletter. I do have a Patreon for more videos kind of like this. Sign up for that. All the links and everything will be down below. Like this video, that really helps with the algorithm. You guys are awesome. But next on the list, is keep an inventory of your pantry and shop off of that inventory of your pantry. For so long, what I was doing is I thought it was awesome. I was meal planning and meal prepping and doing all this stuff. I'd make my grocery list. I would, you know, look at all the, the recipes and the ingredients of what I need, make my list, go shopping. Then I would come home and I had I have the list at home. So I was buying doubles and it was a waste of money and I wasn't saving money. So what I want you to do is go through your pantry, go through your freezer, go through your fridge. I I have printables of all of those where you can take a record of it and write down how many you have. So you can have, I have stewed tomatoes, I have six cans of stewed tomatoes, I have chicken breasts in the freezer, I have six chicken breasts, I have this, I have three of those. And you can go through and that way you can make your meal plan off of that. And so therefore, when you're going through and making all of your recipe lists, you can cross off a lot of the items because you already have them on stock. Then you're spending less in the stores. So you don't have to spend your full grocery budget because you already have a lot of ingredients on hand. So make sure you shop your pantry before you go to the store, before you go and make your list, go through your pantry, go through your freezer, it is vital for saving money. The next tip is to set a reasonable grocery budget. So you guys have heard me say, I recommend $100 per person per month. So if you have a family of three, $300 a month. If you have a family of five, $500 a month. Now, that is the end goal of where you wanna to get to. But like I said in the beginning, don't compare your journey to others, don't get overwhelmed. If you're spending $1,000, don't think that you have to immediately slash your grocery budget in half and starve for half of the month, not feed your kids, curse my name, go to bed hungry every night. No. What I want you to do is slowly cut back, slowly cut back until you get to the point where you want to be. So say your grocery budget is $1,000 a month right now and you want to get it down to five or $600. I want you to make it a challenge for yourself to cut $20 this week. What can you do? How can you cut $20 from your grocery plan? I bet you if you did a lot of these steps, you would be able to cut $20 easily. So cut $20, so now you're at $980 for the month. Okay, we're gonna sit there. We're gonna do $980 for a couple weeks until we get more used to it, until we feel comfortable with $980. Then you're like, all right, I got this. Then what you're gonna do next is cut another 20 or $30 until you feel comfortable at that point. And then keep on cutting until you get to the point you want. Also, track your spending. Track your spending, you guys know I preach track your spending with everything across the board. We are zero-based budget people. You guys know my Excel budget. I'll have a link for it down below. But track your spending track your purchases. Now, if you are tracking your spending every couple days, it's not that bad. You don't feel overwhelmed. You're, it takes five minutes. It's super easy. If you wait to the end of the month, two things are going to happen. One, you're going to get overwhelmed. It's going to take you an hour. You're going to hate it. You're going to be miserable and you're never going to want to track your spending again. Two, it's too late. You already went over budget. You already were like, oh crap, we went $100 over budget and now there's nothing we can do. Oh, oh well, guess we'll have to figure it out next month or do a little bit less next month. No, if you are in your budget every couple days, you're gonna be able to be like, oh, we went over budget this week, next week we gotta cut budget a little bit. We gotta, we gotta make up for it. So if you're in the budget, you can see when you need to cut back, when you need to be like, all right, we gotta rein it in next week, maybe do a pantry challenge. I have a really fun printable in the workbook. Now, if you guys don't want the full course, but you want just the workbook, I do have it on my Etsy shop, but be warned, the workbook comes with the course, so don't get it on Etsy if you're gonna do the course. I don't want you to pay for it twice. But for the workbook, I have a printable on a pantry challenge. So 
each week that you do a pantry challenge, not consecutively, but if you do a pantry challenge where you're not going to the grocery store except for non-perishables like milk, bread, eggs, and stuff, then you can color it in the little jar. And then when you get up, to all your jars colored, then you get a reward. So you can have the reward for whatever you want. You can do it for a date night, you can do it for a pizza night, you can do it for whatever you want, a manicure or something, have the reward, and then it gives you motivation to do a pantry challenge. So that's a fun way to mix things up. But a pantry challenge is really great when you have overspends on your grocery budget and then you can be like, oh crap, we gotta eat from the pantry. Guys, I'll be honest, when this whole quarantine thing happens, I didn't wanna go to the grocery store because of everything that was going on. I had enough food in my house. I was able to go three weeks without going to the store. Three weeks because I had so much food in my pantry, in my fridge, in my freezer. I was not hurting for food. I was not feeling deprived. It was just simply like, oh crap, we don't realize how much food we accumulate in our, in our fridge, in our freezer, in our pantry because we're just so used to buying, buying, buying. But do a pantry challenge and I guarantee you, you will have enough food to get you through the week. Next is shopping in bulk. So shopping in bulk, it can be a really, really great way to save money. Now, if you're shopping at places like BJ, Sam's, Costco, those are awesome ways to save money. But you have to be careful because marketers have caught on. Marketers have learned that if you just put things in big bulk, that people automatically assume that it's cheaper than buying it at the normal grocery store, at places like Aldi or wherever it is. So therefore, make sure you're using the cost per ounce and doing the math. Now, Aldi is awesome because they have the cost per unit, cost per ounce right on the label. So when I'm looking at something like I don't know, like chicken breasts, like frozen chicken tenders or something like that, I can look at the three, four different options and see, okay, this one is 22 cents per ounce, that one's 25 cents per ounce, that one's 26 cents per ounce, they all look the same, they all look the same bag, one of them may be even cheaper, the 26 ounce one may be cheaper per ounce, or per bag, but in the long run, it's actually cheaper than 22 because of the way that the bags are. They all look the same, but you really have to be careful of cost per unit, cost per ounce. So make sure you're using my cost comparison chart where you can go and write it all down, keep track of that because honestly guys, they'll try and trick you. You know, they may say this jar of peanut butter, two jars of peanut butter at Costco is gonna be cheaper than this place at Aldi when not, not necessarily. They may, you know, increase it, because it's buying a bulk, people just assume. So don't assume that buying a bulk is cheaper. Guys, marketers have caught on. Oh, it's annoying, but it is what it is. So definitely check that out. Definitely make sure that you are cost comparison. Do the math, quick, simple equation that you can do on your phone. We all have our phones at the grocery store. Pull the calculator and do the math really quick. So like I said, I have the workbook down below on my Etsy shop. I also have my course available. It will be on sale for one week, one week only, and then it goes up to $79. So make sure that you get it this week, get it today. Huge sale, I'm excited, it's gonna be awesome. I've already had a bunch of people go through the course and gave me lots of great feedback. They all loved it, so I really think that you will love it as well. And if you're one of the first 50 people, then you will automatically be entered into a $100 Amazon gift card giveaway which is amazing. So you can choose from Amazon, Target, or HomeGoods because those are awesome stores. So <laughs> be one of the first 50 people to get the course and you will be entered to get a $100 Amazon gift card. If you wanna know more about Fetch Rewards, an amazing app where you get free gift cards just by scanning your grocery receipts, scanning your Walmart receipts, Target, gas receipts, all of that, check out this video here. And if you wanna know my top money-saving challenges to get you on your goal to saving more money, Check out this video here.